Okay, so we are in the final chapter for this class, for this term, structs. Please read up uh, about structs before you watch this video so you will um, know what we are talking about. Once you read up on structs, you will notice that structs are essentially user-defined data type. Um, it's essentially used for creating our own data type. So um, the advantage of a struct is you can have different data types. Um, in one data type that we create. Instead of having all the same number of um, or the same data type, an array of integers, an array of doubles, an array of characters, they're all, they can only hold one data type, whereas a struct can hold multiple data types. So in this case, we are going to create our own data type. Since it's our own data type, or a user-defined data type, notice we created globally outside of main. So after you includes, we define our struct, then we go into main, so all the program or all the functions after this can use that struct. So the keyword is struct, and the name of my data type is called student type. Notice it starts with a capital S, uh, so all data types have a capital letter to start off with. And curly bracket encloses the data types that I'm going to have, or the members, members of the struct is what they're called. So I have, in this case, four strings and one double member. So I have first name, last name, student ID, address of the student, all defined as strings, and the GPA being a double. So you first want to model your data as to how you want to define this data type, depending on your problem. So in this case, I want a student type data, and the type of data that I want to, or the type of members I want to have for each record is first name, last name, student ID, address, and the GPA. So that is what my data type is going to contain. And notice my semicolon at the end of the uh, set or the curly bracket is very important. Without that, you will get an error. So that ends the definition of the struct is what we're saying. The other thing to remember is you cannot initialize these variables. So I cannot come here and say double GPA equals zero. It's going to give me an error message. I cannot do that. The reason being we are only defining our data type. We are not allocating any memory for any of this data yet. When we declare our variable, that is when we allocate memory for each one of these members. So defining a data type is very different from declaring a variable. So that is the difference that we are going to try to understand from this chapter. Until now, we already had the existing data type and we declared variables. Now we are going to create our own data type, kind of like the enums that we did, the enumerated list type. So define your data type outside. You cannot initialize any of these variables. Once you're done defining your data type, then you come into main. Now it's time to declare variables. So notice my data type is called student type. And I have two variables, PCC student and PSU student, declared of that data type. So my variables are PCC student and PSU student, while student type is actually my data type, like an int or a double or a char that comes with the system. Once I have that, I'm going to read user input for PCC student from the console, from the user. So I tell the user, enter student's first name. I use get line, so I can make sure that I can read spaces. Get line, C in, comma, the variable. Notice how, my, how I access the member of that PCC student, the first name member, using the dot operator, which is called the member access operator. So if I say PCC student dot, it gives me if you are using Visual Studio, it usually will give you a list of the variables or the members of that particular variable of that data type. So I want to say PCC student .f name. Then next I'm going to try and read the last name. So use get line again for all strings. Use get line, um, the ID number and the address. And then finally we are reading the double. GPA, which is just using the extraction operator. So we use the dot for all of that. And uh, we say this is all related to PCC student by saying PCC student dot GPA or dot F name. So use the member access operator. So with that, we have populated one record, which is the PCC students. 
in the next statement here, I'm just showing you that we can use the assignment operator to copy everything from PCC student to PSU student. So you can use the assignment operator. Unlike an array where you cannot do aggregate copy, in a struct you can do an aggregate assignment. Now that is the only aggregate operation you can do, by the way. You cannot compare structs as a whole, meaning I cannot say if PSU student is equal to PCC student, I have to do it member-wise if PCC student's dot F name is equal to or if string compare, whatever function you need to use to compare. So the only aggregate operation we can do is the assignment operator. So I copy everything from PCC student to PSU student. And of course, they must be the same data types. And then I come here and output PSU student's information just to show you that it has all the same information as my PCC student that we entered. And that's it. That's all we're doing here. So it's a very quick example of showing you how to create a data type, a user-defined data type, a struct, put all the members in it, don't forget the semicolon, and Read the data, use the member access operator to read all the data. You can use the assignment operator if you want to copy from one to the other. And then if we run this, it says enter student's first name. So put in a first name, put in a last name, student's ID number, put in a G number, student's address, one, two, three, four, ABC street, put in some address. and GPA. I notice my GPA says 4 rather than 4.0, so you want to probably set all the precision and things like that. But that kind of gives you an idea, and it is printing all of the PSU students' information, which was done through the assignment operator. So that's a quick example of basic structs. Now, I am going to exclude that, and I'm going to open one more file and show you how to create nested structs. Now, we had only five members in our student type data type that we created. What if we have, for example, the address? It so happened that I put all the address on one line. What happens if you want to create different members for each line of the address? If you wanted to say street name, door number, city, zip, and state separately. So we could, once you have it all as separate data members, then you could sort on each field or you could search on each field. You could do a lot of things as opposed to putting them all in one field. It's, it's like a database now. So the more we separate it, the better we could use it. Likewise for date. If you could put in uh, the day, month, and year separately, then you can search by year or search by month. So then our number of data members increases and you'd have a struct with like 20 data members and it becomes way too long. So here is how we create nested structs. Nested structs are where we separate our structs, especially the ones that we can reuse. For example, the address. Notice in this program I have put my address struct separately. So I have struct address, it's called address, and I have five data members, all strings, street name, door number, city, zip, and state, and a semicolon to end my address struct. Then I have one more that defines the date struct. So the date struct has three integers, int, day, int, month, and int, year, and ends with a semicolon. Then I define the student struct, which is going to have both the address and the date struct. So if you're going to use the address and the date struct in some other struct, Define those structs first, then define the struct where you're going to use them. So you need to define the address and date first so that you can actually use it in the student type struct. If you define your student type struct first and you call it address and date, it's going to say, I don't know what it is because you haven't defined it yet. So make sure if you want to use those structs, define them first. Then now my student type has a couple of extra um, variables. I have uh, members. I have first name, last name, student ID. They are part of the student type. Now notice my address. I have something called student address and its data type is address. The struct that I defined is called address. So my student address is essentially a variable of my own struct address. 
And then of course I have a double GPA, which is same. And I have a join date and a quit date. Now again, these two dates are my own struct data types, the date that I created. So that way, this one student address has replaced five other members that I would have, and the join date and the quit date have replaced six other data members that I might have. And if you think about it, the dates would be repeated and it would be very confusing. So this is a better way to create structs when you start modeling. Again, when you start, when you start your program analysis and you start modeling the data, you might want to think about these kind of things. Now, how do we use it? So come to main, and again, I have two variables, PCC student and PSE student, just two records. I read the user input. Now, when I read user input, the first name, last name is all regular because they are direct members. Now, notice members like street name, which is part of the address. I have to go PCC student dot my address variable dot and then whatever the address variable leads up to, which is street name. So we keep digging deeper into our nested structure. That's all it is. But you just have to go in the right order. So PCC student has the student address, and that has the door number, street name, city, and so on and so forth. Now GPA happens to be right at the root level, so we just have one member access operator. And once we read all that, again, I use the assignment operator. And printing works the same way. Student address goes like PSG student dot student address dot door number, and so on and so forth. So that's how you use nested structs. Now, if I build it and run it, notice it works the same way. There's nothing different about it. It's just the way data is stored, and it's just the way we write the program. It makes it easy for us to maintain that data. So now my street name, if I say ABC Northwest, door number, and city, it's all going to go in separately. So if I wrote more of my program to search by city, I could do it as opposed to putting it all in one line. That would make searching by certain fields harder. So that's nested structs.